So often when we read uh, the readings, when we hear the readings proclaimed at Mass, we may think, uh, that's, that's nice, but it's got nothing, nothing to do with me, really. You know, you hear about Moses crossing the Red Sea, and you go, that was nice, happened eons ago, and I don't think I'm ever going to need to part a lake or a river or a sea. So that was nice that it happened, but it's got nothing to do with me. <clears throat> Over here with the Passion, and the Jews plotting against Jesus, I would never plot against Jesus. Right, and then the Roman scourge, I would never scourge Jesus. I wouldn't. I wouldn't like Jews have betrayed him. Oh, terrible. And you hear all these things, and <clears throat> they're nice, but like they're kind of all for other people. You know, the things happened a long time ago to other people, other places, and we kind of listen to it from the perspective of maybe entertainment and think that's, you know, they're nice stories, but it's got nothing to do with me. And then you've got today's reading, right, <laughs> which speaks about marriage, right? Uh, and I remember having the experience here of one of our young people. And as long as the readings were kind of about other people, he was happy enough. But on occasion, the way then, you know, I, during the homily, I tried, try and make it, I tried to make these things relevant to our lives. He often felt accused. Now, I never mentioned his name and I never mentioned him. Uh, but often the idea of having to change uh, our habits to be a bit more disciplined. He felt, he felt, he felt kind of challenged and kind of like I was accusing him of something even though it was very general very general I'm talking to everybody but when the gospel had something to do with his life suddenly no 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 no, no. I preferred the stories about the crossing of seas and rivers can we talk about them again because they were fine uh, but no if when you talk about me having to change my life and kind of be disciplined about what I do at my time and con the, the control of my words and control of my passions, that's, this is intolerable language, <laughs> to quote our gospel, you know? So it's very interesting, and it's, it's, a, it's a, a great danger that scripture becomes about other people for other people, as opposed to really about me and for me. And, and if, if we may never make that transition, that this, this word is actually a living word that speaks to me today, then firstly, the readings will always be boring because I don't really care about people crossing seas and rivers. That's wonderful. Do you know, but I don't care. You know, if, it, if it's just about stories of entertainment like that happened eons ago, I don't care. Like, I've got, there's better, you get way more entertainment watching YouTube with cats on skateboards, right? They, the other things that they do is incredible. But way more entertaining, okay, than, than listening to this if it's all about other people in another time. For, but if it's about me, if it's about me and for me, then this takes on a whole new meaning. Okay? Now you just imagine this reading like being spoken to you into your life. Right? You have Moses, a bit of biblical history, Moses who leads the people out of Egypt. Right? Leads the people out of Egypt. They're enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years. So they, they, don't, they don't even remember what the Holy Land looked like. They don't remember what freedom was like. They've been enslaved for so long. And he leads them out. And through all signs of amazing prodigies and miracles and, as I say, parting of the Red Sea and so on, they're able to flee from the Egyptians. But now they find themselves in the desert. And in the desert, there is nothing. So they were hungry and they were thirsty. And again, rather than trusting in God, they give out to him. They complain to him, why did you lead us out here to die? You know, the Lord's track record in their life was absolutely stellar. The Lord's track record in their lives was fantastic. What he had done to free them was Nothing short of epic, miraculous. <clears throat> why, would he, why would he stop now? Why would he stop providing for them now? But instead of praying to him and asking him, they give out to him. Now, despite that, <clears throat> he still grants their prayers. Manna on a daily basis, water from the rock, and so on. But they still grumble against him. Moses goes up to get the Ten Commandments. They build a calf. They want something else to adore. Lads, God just freed ye. What are you doing? Creating a sucky calf, and then adoring it? What's that about? That's stupid, <laughs> right? It's called idolatry, and it's against the first commandment. Well, we, well I suppose the first commandment, the com commandment hadn't really been written yet, so maybe we can excuse him of that. But still, it's fairly obvious the calf didn't lead you out of slavery, okay? So just why do you do these things? Um, okay, that generation then grumbled against God, complained against God so often and so consistently that they didn't get into the Holy Land, which, by the way, isn't that... Well, it's a long walk if you had to walk it. But they were in the desert for 40 years. It doesn't take 40 years to get there. 
and actually the, the trajectory that they took, the route that they took, is around in circles completely. They never got there. They grumbled against God so much. The, second, the next generation after them did, led by Joshua, today's reading. So Joshua is the one who leads them into the Holy Land. Okay, just to get your biblical history together. So now, we know, we, now we know who, who we're talking to. So we're talking about the children. He's talking to the children of those who were freed from slavery in Egypt. And he gathers them together. And he calls the elders and the leaders and the judges and the whole lot of them. And says, if you will not serve the Lord, choose today whom you want to serve. As in, I'm not going to force you. Right? Who do you want to serve though? We've got God who freed us. He gives a quick, quick little history. Uh, choose whom you wish to serve. Where did the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river? That's beyond the Jordan, back in Egypt. You can serve those gods if you wish. Or the gods of the Amorites. So they're the pagan gods who, who, who were uh, in the, the Holy Land when, they, when Joshua got back there. So you can, you can serve those gods. But then he kind of lays down what I'm going to do. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Now, you read that and you go, I, I, yeah, I like that. But... Imagine if we said that. Imagine if we said that. You know, me and my house, like, like we, we choose, choose what God you want to serve. We have the gods of, like, success and power and beauty and I work out, I look awesome, I've got Botox. Um, and, uh, like, all of these kind of, my life revolves around beauty. Actually, when I think about it, I actually spend an awful lot of time, an awful lot of money, an awful lot of my thoughts are spent on these things, or my career. I put everything, everything, everything into that. Or <clears throat> whatever it may be, money, whatever, my addictions, my hobbies. You know, I'm 50 years old and I'm still planning constantly my next skiing holiday. And my kids are graduating, but they'll be fine. They'll graduate without me. I'm going skiing. You know, this, this, when we pursue our hobbies above everything, you know, some men who just don't grow up. So all these things that just gently actually slip into the first place in our lives, like everything actually revolves around this. God is in there. He kind of fits in there. Barely for 45 minutes on a Sunday if I absolutely have to. But he loves me even if I don't go to Mass. So, you know, I can just kind of give him a thumbs up once a week and that, that's enough, isn't it? No. <laughs> no, it's not. Like, as for me and my house, my family, we will serve the Lord. Like, it's, it's, it's such a clear statement. And then the, the people say afterwards... We have no intention of deserting the Lord our God, who brought us and our ancestors out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, and who worked great wonders before our eyes and, and preserved us all the way along, so on and so forth, to get us here to where we are today. We have no intention of deserting him. Incidentally, they do. But the point is, though, to have that clarity. This scripture is about you and I. Have I decided to serve the Lord? Have I? Have I, actually? Because the way I use my time will prove whether I have chosen to serve the Lord or not. If I don't give the Lord any time during my day, if I don't pray to him, then I have not chosen to serve him. I haven't. If I give him the absolute minimum, the leftovers of my life, then I haven't chosen to serve the Lord. I tolerate his presence in my life. That's not serving him. Like, do, do, like, just, this is a radical call. You know, this scripture is about you and I. Then there's Ephesians, which speaks about marriage. Brace for impact. Okay, so Ephesians 5. Give way to one another in obedience to Christ. Okay, start with that one. Hold that one in your mind just for a second. Okay, give way to one another. Before you come at me with pitchforks and lighted torches, keep that one in mind. Give way to one another. So it's bi-directional. Okay, give way to one another in Christ. Now hold on. Now hold on. Just sit down a second and stay seated. Wives should regard their husbands as they regard the Lord, since as Christ is head of the church and saves the whole body, so the husband is the head of his wife. And as the church submits to Christ, so wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Okay, great. I always choose this reading for weddings if I can. If I have a choice, if they leave it up to me, I always choose this one because I love it. I think it's class. It's <coughs> because you, see, you, you always see the bridesmaids up the front going, Kind of looking back to their boyfriend or husband going, don't you even think about listening to that one? Mm -mm. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, because the, if the reading stopped there, if we left out the first line and the reading stopped there, obviously it would be entirely unacceptable and would seem very, very lopsided. Okay. So wives have to give way to their husbands, submit to their husbands. Oh, right. 
Now, what, is, what are husbands supposed to do? This is the bit that's always forgotten when we read that. It's very, very clear in the reading, but listen to what it says husbands are supposed to do. Husbands should love their wives as Christ loved his church. How did Christ love his church? Lift your gaze just a little. That's how Christ loved his church. Right? Scourged to within an inch of his life, made to carry his own cross up a hill, nailed to it, and died after three hours of agony, knowing, by the way, all in, in, in advance that all of this would happen. And all he had to do was just not be in Jerusalem, and he could have avoided it. But he goes through it out of love for his beloved, for his bride, us. That's what husbands have to do. I think the women get off lightly. <laughs> right? That's what husbands have to do. That's what husbands have to do. This is fantastic. Like, so now we're, we're given, a, like, so, and submission, by the way, even that word, we hate that word. Submission. I mean, break it up. Submission. Sub means? Sandwich. No. Uh, so, <laughs> so, sub means, sub means under, like submarine, and mission is mission. So we're under the mission, under the same mission. We submit. We're under the same mission. What's your mission? As husband and wife, what's your mission? To love one another. And to love your kids. <laughs> Bring the whole shebang to heaven. That's your mission. That's your mission. Love each other. Love the, the, lives, the lives that the Lord has entrusted to you. And bring them all to heaven. That's your mission. Everything else serves that. God in the first place. Everything is aimed then towards getting them all to God. Everything, your work serves that. Your hobbies serve that. Everything serves that mission. So you're submitting to the same mission. So wives... Give way to your husband. Submit. Mutual submission. Wives, submit to your husband so you don't always have to have the last word. But husbands, die for your wives. And that's, just not, that's, not, that's not the, you know, there's uh, an attacker downstairs and I can hear he's sharpening his knives. No. It means on a daily basis. With your time. With your, like, affirmation. To not always have to have cut her down. Build her up. Thank her. Love her. Appreciate her, make her know, making sure that she knows she's loved and appreciated just the way she is. So there's all there's all of this. Like it's it's this reading has everything to do with us, and that can be kind of intimidating. More much more with Eve, I'm honest. <laughs> uh, I have to submit to my bride in a kind of a different way, but um, but this reading has everything to do with us, and that can actually be, as I say, as I said at the beginning, maybe a bit more of a problem. It's easier. When the readings are about other people and doing other things, that's, that's fine. Let them do their thing, cross their rivers and cross their seas. But this has everything to do with you and I, and the way we live our lives, and the choices that we make today. And that's why the first reading, today I choose to follow you. You know, Joshua, who makes this decision, on behalf of his household, we will serve the Lord. Good. And if we mean that, what does that look like? What am I actually going to do? If I'm actually going to serve the Lord, what does that practically look like? Because if it doesn't have a practical implication, it means nothing. So what's the practical implication of me serving the Lord? Daily prayer. Obviously weekly mass. If, more frequently if we can. But I think the key to it is daily prayer. And daily prayer in the family if it's at all possible. And that way then we have this divine source for the grace that we need to live marriage as we're called to live it. Mutual, give way to one another in obedience to Christ. Mutual service, authentic self-sacrificial love. So this is our, these are our readings today, not to, not to mention the gospel. There's the first two readings. I won't do the gospel because we haven't time. But just those readings, see how much, how much wealth there is in, in, in those two short readings for your daily life. It's phenomenal. The readings have everything to do with you and I. And so we ask the Lord today to soften our hearts, to melt them, melt them and mould them. That we even become the fathers, the mothers, the priests. That the Lord is calling us to be. That he may root out of our lives all that gets in the way. All laziness or complacency. All self-reliance. All sin. Lord, that we may choose with all of our hearts today to, to love and serve you. Amen.